Hi, this is Ivan, and um, I um, just felt um, encouraged to just kind of capture this one thought the Holy Spirit brought across my mind um, in this dealing with sexual addiction. And it, um, I guess the title of this is Sexual Addiction, The Way of Escape. And I remember the Holy Spirit said it to me, um, I, don't, I can't remember how long ago, but he said it to me a couple times. It's like, what are you trying to escape from? Why are you running? What are you trying to escape from? And I felt like today he ministered um, something to me, and it's that I'm trying to escape from what I see. Something, you know, there's a phrase that says, fear is false evidence that appears real. What I'm looking at in my situation looks real. It looks unescapable. It looks like I can't avoid it. I can't get away from it. So I seek to escape in, in my addiction, you know, and my addiction being sexual, some people escape through cigarettes or drinking or through gambling or shopping or overeating. They lose themselves in an attempt to escape from what they see. Something that they see appears real. Um, and I'm looking at this scripture. Um, there's a couple of scriptures I want to share on that real quick. You know, um, 2 Corinthians 4.16 says... Um, it talks about, you know, looking to, looking to, um, uh, well, it just talks about what you're looking at. I'll just read it. Second Corinthians four 16. I'm gonna start there all the way through uh, verse 18, second Corinthians chapter four, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Another way of saying that is therefore we do not lose. Um, we don't faint or quit or give up or run, try to hide. Um, uh, my heart, your heart, the scripture talks about your heart failing you. This is it. In the last days, men's hearts will fail them uh, for fear. You know, the heart, you know, and so we can, it says, therefore, we do not lose heart or lose courage. Um, though outwardly uh, we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Holy Spirit, give me something even now that renewing every day is a, uh, a choice to renew by faith. Versus what we see, but we'll come to that in a minute. It says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix not our we fix our eyes not on what is seen. We don't look at our light and momentary troubles. The fact that it doesn't look like we're going to have enough money to pay rent this month or to keep our phone on. Or it doesn't look like um, there's anybody coming that's going to be available to rescue me in my loneliness. Or it doesn't look like... Uh, the things that God has promised me are ever going to come true. It says we do not fix our eyes on what is seen, but what is on what on what is unseen, and that's the whole thing. Let me keep reading. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal, and that's where the devil comes in in terms of sexual addiction, the way of escape. The enemy wants you to focus on. He wants to do the opposite of verse eighteen. He wants you to fix your eyes on what you can see, because there's no hope for you in the unseen. That's the lie of the devil. If you can't see it, you can't believe it. God's promises, you can't see them coming to pass. You don't know for sure they're coming to pass. He tells you to fix your eyes on what is seen because in that realm, he has control over what, what you know, um, what is, is seen or maybe even what we feel in our emotions. He can even impact our thought life um, because, you know, the scripture says that which is seen, why do we yet hope for? That which is seen is not hope. You know, we hope in the things that are, that are um, unseen. Hebrews 11 says faith is a substance of things hoped for. You know, so faith is tied directly to things we can't even see. We're still hoping for them. You know, but it says, therefore, we do not lose heart in verse 16, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. I want to look up that, you know, we can lose heart if we focus on what we see and we don't, you know, use our faith. But I want to, um, I want to look for, um, there's, uh, there's a scripture in, 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 um, in Psalms that talks about, Fainting it talks about if you faint in the day of adversity. I'm gonna find it here real quick. Come on, computer, hang on with me. I'm on camera. I need you to hurry up and search this faster. Um. Ooh, Lord, this is good. There's some good stuff in here on, on on fainting. I'm just gonna read some of these. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, woo. Oh Lord. Hmm. From the ends of the earth, Lord, I call to you as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Uh, that was um, uh, Psalm 6, 2. Um, Psalm, Psalm 142, 3. When my spirit 
grows faint within me. I know it is you who know my way. Psalm 143.4. So my spirit grows faint within me. Let's keep going. Here we go. Um, uh, where is it? Oh, man. Maybe it's. Oh, man. I can't find it. Oh, man. Maybe it's because I'm looking in the wrong translation. Let me change my translation. I'm in NIV. Let me go to King James Version. King James. Fainteth. I think it's fainteth. Hang in there with me. Fainteth. Otherwise, I'm going to have you look it up. Because I don't, I don't want you to ever take what I say um, for granted. You always check out anything anybody says. Um, oh, I can't find it. He that fainteth in the day of adversity, his strength is small. I know that's the, um, uh, let me look up adversity. Because that's what the enemy does. The things are momentary and light afflictions. The scripture talks about in Mark 4 how the cares of this life, um, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word that's been sown in our heart. The enemy brings adversity to choke off the word so we can't use our faith. So we do have to focus. If we're not using our faith, then we're focusing on the unseen. And in that realm... He can use adversity he, to choke off the word that's trying to bring forth fruit. Mark 4 talks about how the word sown in our heart um, brings, okay, here it is, Proverbs 24.10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You know, your, 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 your strength is small, so we need to build up our faith. Uh, I want to go to Hebrews. I'm not going to have time to look at all these up because I don't want to drag this out. I'll make you look them up. <laughs> uh, Hebrews um, 11 says, he that cometh to God must believe uh, that he exists and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So that's part of the answer to the unseen. I press on in faith knowing that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's the antidote, the, the counter to the enemy's trick to try to keep us focused on what we see. If we focus on what we see and that's all we have is what we can do in the natural in our own strength, what we can do through our own you know, efforts to maybe work another job or to make that financial answer come through in our own strength. You know, granted, we can budget and we can be good stewards, um, but some things, you know, are supernatural. You know, God can supernaturally provide through favor, through debt cancellation, through so many different ways. You know, it's whatever the, the issue is, faith is the answer. But the enemy wants you to focus on the realm of the scene, you know, so that there looks like there's no way of escape. And if you can put the pressure on you enough, addiction becomes a way of escape. It's a painkiller. It's a number. It doesn't do anything to change the, the situation. The scripture we looked at first says our momentary and light afflictions. There's things that are going to come at us, you know, and escaping an, addic an addiction doesn't change any of those circumstances, but it's like a painkiller. It numbs the pain that we feel, the hopelessness that we feel um, when you run up against something that that you can't change in your own strength it brings on a sense of hopelessness and despair and then the enemy's answer to that hopelessness and despair is your addiction of choice in my case sexual addiction if someone would just touch me if someone would just hold me i could escape the pain of my life um and, and go to another place um and the enemy doesn't want you to realize that when you come out of that place that you checked out to or that drug that you checked into you're gonna come back to the same place and in some cases, your checking out makes what you came back to worse. You checked out an alcohol. Your alcoholic binge might have hurt someone or you damaged relationships with a family. You checked out in your sexual binge. You know, there might be a pregnancy. There might be an STD. There might be uh, something even worse, a rape or, or whatever. Um, oh, one last scripture I want to read. I, know, I do want to find this one. It said, there's a scripture that says, I had fainted unless I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, and um, come on, my Bible is searching for it. Um, and so, I mean, that's important because if you don't believe that you're going to see God's goodness, if you don't believe, like Hebrew said, that he that cometh to God um, must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him if you don't this is the confidence first john 5 14 that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and grants the petitions um, that we desire if we don't have that confidence if we don't believe that we'll see the goodness of god in the land of the living 
Um, ooh, here's one I'm passing by. This is Jonah 2, 7. I'm just looking. It says, when my soul fainted, when he get, when his, um, what do we say in the other scripture? Um, we said, oh man, I forgot it already. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. I'll have to come back to it. Uh, but I'll read this one. <laughs> it wasn't the word faint. It was another word they used uh, for faint. Um, but I'll come back to that in a minute. John and Jonah 2, 7 says, when my soul fainted. This is him, him giving up. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer and my prayer came in unto thee in that holy temple. You know, um, in Jonah 4, 8, it talks about. Um, and it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a ve vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished himself to die. You know, we can get so weak in terms of even just. Um, oh, man, I got to I got to find the other scripture. Um, I had fainted unless. Maybe it's NIV. Um, and lest I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I got to find that scripture because that's so key. All right. My phone keeps beeping. Stop beeping phone. <sighs> Fainted NIV. Let's show me, show me, show me. Mm, okay. Maybe I should just look up land of the living. Hang in there with me. Um, maybe you've already found it. Maybe you should call me and tell me what it is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, land of the living. Let's see if I got it in here. And my computer could be faster. Um, this is, you know, it's a good example of what you can do when you, um, you know, just by going on your computer, you can rapidly go through scriptures you know, to encourage yourself. And that's basically, you know, what I'm what I'm doing here. I had gotten into a place of my own where I realized I was slipping into despair and Holy Spirit, you know, basically challenged me. What are you trying to escape from? You on, you know, I was on the run, you know, emotionally and spiritually. It's like, what are you on the run from? What are you trying to escape from? What in your life looks like it can't be changed? Um, and that's what led to this. I can't, I can't find on uh, this scripture land of, oh, the living. Um, and that's what prompted me to, to do this, this particular entry. I'm going to find this scripture for you because I, I, I need to know it myself because I get to this point, you know, I've gotten to this point in my own struggle uh, with addiction several times and I need to know these scriptures, um, myself and I can't. I'm on the Bible software and can't find it. I have fainted unless I... Oh, it's because I'm trying to put it in the New Testament. Lord. Um, it's Psalms. <laughs> Psalms 27, 13. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Glory to God. I had fainted. I had given up. I had lost hope. I quit. I had run away trying to escape. Lest I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You have to believe that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You have to believe 1 John 5, 14, that he that cometh to God. Oh, that's Hebrews 11. He that cometh to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 5 John 14. This is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And we know that it's his will for us to have wisdom, insight. We know that his will that, that we not walk in fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. That's in First Peter 2, I believe. Um, so, you know, the next time you feel like you're, you feel that urge to run, that instinct to escape into your addiction, ask yourself, what am I trying to escape from? What have I painted in my mind? What picture have I painted in my mind? Of, of What is that thing that I've painted in my mind as unmovable, unchangeable, unresolvable? Um, and, and I'm trying to escape from it. Maybe it's like for me yesterday, a phone call that I really didn't want to make. And I still haven't made it. And I dreaded it. Joyce Meyer talks about dread. I dreaded it and I let that fear of this confrontation drive me to a place where I just wanted to run away from my life. And run into my fantasy booth if you will and in my fantasy booth my fantasy booth has another door another level that then goes and tries to say 
Now let's leave fantasy and go turn this into a real liaison, a real sexual union where you can totally lose both your mind and your body um, in this escape. And, you know, and, and if the enemy would have his way, it would be an escape, not just for moments or hours, but for days that I would just totally, you know, check out of the land of the living, if you will, and, and move into the land of fantasy and sexual oblivion is what one of my sexual addiction books calls it, sexual oblivion. You just oblivious to everything else that's going on in your life. All these cares and you know worries. The um, the the what do the scriptures say? Second Corinthians four sixteen. Um, the um, I'll just look it up again. Second Corinthians. <laughs> I gotta get this scripture uh, in my heart. You can see I'm struggling, but I'm gonna leave this struggle on. I'm not gonna redo this video because you can see I gotta be able. Jesus said it is written. It is written. He did battle with the enemy. You need to be able to do the same thing. If you can't, then you need to get in there and memorize those scriptures more, just like I'm looking at. Um, for our affliction, our light and momentary affliction, those light and momentary afflictions that the scripture says that we're going to have, you know, we need to be able to uh, look at those things and and through faith see the answer and tear down this impression that those things aren't things that we can deal with through God and through faith and through Faith answers, answers to prayers about our finances, our loneliness, our uh, fear of confrontation or whatever it is. I pray that, you know, this uh, entry has blessed you. It certainly blessed me. And it's something I'm still very much working on because sometimes I don't see that I'm trying to escape until I'm already on the run or until I'm already in despair, until I'm already knocking on addiction's door, beating on it, trying to kick it in to run away from a pain or pressure uh, or situation or circumstance in my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen.